This is going to be a general overview of the CTX-4000 and photo anglo radar units used by the National Security Agency to uh, remotely target their uh, planted bugs. Um, these are essentially uh, continuous wave radar units, much in a similar operation to a uh, police Doppler radar, except that they're operated at a much lower frequency. CTX-4000 operates at uh, 1 to 2 gigahertz, the photo angle up to 1 to 4 gigahertz. Um, the reason for the wide frequency range is uh, the planted bug is essentially uh, frequency independent. It works by uh, modulating the backscatter radiation. You can get a good overview of this in US patent 7180402. Essentially what the radar unit is doing is sending an interrogation signal, which is an unmodulated continuous wave carrier. The planted bug is then chopping up the received, or it's called the backscatter signal. It uh, AM modulates it. I'll be describing the, the actual bug operation later. This is basically all it's doing. And you can, the return signal, the weakened uh, return signal is in, uh, remotely received by the unit. Um, You can see uh, they described the general operation. It's just an unmodulated CW signal, which is in gener generated internally or externally. It amplifies it, sends it out to the uh, planted bug. It radiates the planted bug, and the re-radiated signal, which is called the backscatter signal, is then received by the photo angle of CTX 4000 unit. Um, a copy, or uh, the uh, transmitted carrier is sampled and then mixed with the received signal then the carriers essentially uh, cancel out and you're left with the baseband uh, signal which it's referred to as the baseband signal which is essentially contains your uh, uh, intelligence to be extracted it could be audio or it could be a, like a VGA signal from a monitor or something as where the uh, the bandwidth refers to the um, um, IF bandwidth on the output of the quadrature mixers which are required in order to demodulate uh, uh, both uh, amplitude frequency and phase modulated signals. The photo angle has a maximum bandwidth up to 450 megahertz. The reason the bandwidth on the IF outputs are so high is to receive uh, video signals, uh, VGA uh, monitor signals, or super VGA, you know, stuff like that. It tends to be a, you know, a very a wide band, and you need a uh, wide band IF. The output power for the CTX-4000 was, uh, I think, yeah, both the photo angle and the CTX is, uh, internally it's only 2 watts. You don't need a lot of power to uh, illuminate the uh, uh, planted bug. But there is an uh, option for an external 1 kilowatt, 1000 watt amplifier. Um, 1000 watts seems like a lot, but really it's not. Um, In radar operations, you have your transmitted power, transmitted gain, and you have your path loss from your transmit antenna to your planted bug essentially, and then you got to go that distance again from the bug back to your received antenna. So there's lots of path loss. Um, a thousand watt signal might only go 400 feet, you know. None of these implanted bugs go more, or all the ranges are measured in feet. They're there's no magical physics going on. This is uh, not magical stuff. Um, they have to obey the laws of physics just like everybody else. Um, another thing, at 1000 watts, um, it's possible to add a little diode detector um, on the one of your uh, antennas for your planted bug. You can actually recharge your batteries at the kilowatt signal. The phase adjustment with the front panel knob, knob this is most likely for a uh, active canceller type circuit. What that does is, uh, on the received signal, there tends to be a lot of uh, noise and a uh, large static signal. Like if you're targeting uh, an office building, obviously 
you know, office building is going to reflect 99% of your energy, your RF energy, and the 1% contains your actual modulation. And by uh, adjusting the phase of a sampled signal, you can actually cancel out the uh, carrier. I'll show you that in more detail later. Remote controllable, that just means, uh, you know, there's probably a, it could be like a remote receiver to shut down the transmit output in case they're performing a countermeasure sweep or something, you want to be able to turn off your transmitter outputs, transmit antenna output. The antennas on these devices are most likely log periodic types like this, wideband. Uh, the problem is, is they need to be isolated, the transmit and receive need to be isolated. So you tend to use horn antennas. This is a coffee can horn antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. Um, these would be ideal. They're very frequency dependent though. They do make wideband horns and te horn antennas, but they're just uh, really expensive. But if you're I guess, like, experimenting for the 2.4 gigahertz range, this would be your transmit and your receive antennas, and these essentially isolate, isolate each other, so you won't have to... Um, just because you need um, so much isolation between your transmit and receive and a device like this, that just uh, helps to improve the isolation. I and Q video outputs. Um, this is the in-phase and quadrature phase output from the mixers. Um, it's referred to as a video output, but that's mostly a, uh, an his historical term. The It's not a real video like you're thinking normally, like you took up to a VCR. It's the raw baseband output of a mixer. In the olden days, we used to use these devices called crystal detectors. And this is just a diode, essentially. And the output is referred to as the video output. It's essentially just the rectified uh, RF signal output. They use little diodes that look like that. So that's a crystal video diode. One in 21. Um, DC bias for an external preamp. All that does is uh, on the uh, signal f or the uh, connector for the receive antenna. There's just an inductor. It adds a little DC bias. And then on your external preamp, there's another inductor that just taps off the voltage. It's used to uh, power the preamp. External oscillator. Um, you might want to have like a, a low, low phase noise to phase locked oscillator. That might not be external, so you just want to be able to switch over to the uh, external oscillator at some point. The updated photo, photo angle unit. Uh, just basically smaller. There's all the basic same stuff, just smaller it looks like. There's a general block diagram. We have our internal oscillator. This is going to be a low phase noise oscillator. Most likely a YIG. It's a device that looks like that. Um, these are current controlled instead of voltage controlled. Um, they tend to have really low phase noise, uh, which is ideal for these applications because uh, any noise on our signal is going to be amplified further. And if we're doing, since we're already dealing with uh, weak signals to begin with, we don't want any phase noise uh, interfering with our uh, received intelligence. There's an RF switch, most likely. That's an RF switch. This is a common transco uh, single pole dual throw switch. Uh, SMA connectors and it operates at 28 volts. In standard common, you're normally open, normally closed. It's basically it's just like a normal relay, just that it operates up to 18 gigahertz. That's so they choose the external oscillator, which could be a phase locked uh, oscillator to some specific frequency. Um, the YIG oscillator, this particular one, operates from 1.75 to 4.3 gigahertz. And you'd want it to probably want it to be manually tuned so you can actually tune through the frequency range. What happens is uh, secured areas often have uh, shielding. They'll kind of look like something like this among all the uh, doors and windows and stuff. Here's a microwave case. You can see the all the screw holes. But what happens is uh, if you were to illuminate this 
particular case with the quarter wavelength signal, or signal whose quarter wavelength it can fit between these two, uh, you know, all the holes. You can essentially sneak a signal inside the device or inside and out. So you want to be able to manually tune to a, a wide frequency range to discover a specific frequency. The uh, output of the oscillator is in a sampled most with a device, most likely a uh, directional coupler. Which uh, device like that? This has an internal 50 ohm load. There's one with an external load. It just uh, samples the uh, portion of the transmit signal. This is a 20 dB coupled one. This is an 8 dB coupled one. We'd have a uh, Next, thing, it's gonna, the uh, direct output is going to go into your transmit amplifiers. Uh, these boost the signal up to around 2 watts. On the output of the amplifier, we have a device called an isolator. What this does is uh, it only allows RF to flow in one direction. Any reflected power gets sent to a 50 ohm load in this case, as an internal load. What that does is isolate the uh, stages from each other so the transmit amplifier feeding the antenna essentially never sees the antenna. If the antenna were to have something wrong with it, all the uh, reflected energy would be flow back into the 50 ohm load. Um, this is very handy in a radar units of these types because it kind of cuts down any interference and it kind of further isolates each of the components from each other. This is a wideband isolator for um, it's called the peripheral, peripheral mode isolator. It operates between 2 and 7 gigahertz. It's designed for low power signals only, like from the output of the YAG oscillator. There'd be one uh, mounted there that just, uh, this is a salvage from from HP signal generator, which is basically what they were using it to, just to isolate the oscillator from any stages to avoid pulling the frequency off of the uh, normally tuned frequency. Um, Again, the output of the isolator is connected to the transmit antenna, which is most likely a log periodic or a horn type antenna. On the sample of our, uh, our transmit oscillator, it then gets split into two. This is what a splitter looks like. These are called zero degrees splits. Zero degrees splitters. Uh, they split the sig RF signal equally into two parts with no phase shift between each of the output ports. There is a 3 dB loss, that's standard. One of the um, arms essentially feeds, this is an active canceller circuit. This is a, a variable attenuator. This is a phase shifter, RF phase shifter. So what we want to do is we have essentially a uh, copy of our transmitted signal. We're going to attenuate that down maybe by 80 dB or so. And then we're going to phase shift it 180 degrees. That's going to get fed back into our receive side. That's going to cancel our uh, any static reflected energy. I'll describe that a little more detail in a bit. The other port of the splitter goes to a device called a 3dB hybrid. It's basically just a directional coupler with a 50 ohm terminator on one port. So we have our RF input on this port, termination on this port. It gets split into two again, 3dB. But this time we have a phase shift. There's a 0 degrees output and a 90 degrees output phase shift. What this does is turn, we essentially create a stereo signal that allows us to uh, analyze our returned received RF signal in, the, in both uh, amplitude, frequency, and phase. And by determining each of those three components, we can demodulate just about anything. The local oscillator. Well, the uh, hybrid feeds the uh, local oscillator on standard uh, double-balanced mixer. 
These are going to be high quality mixers. Uh, these are Watkins Johnson's M1Gs. Um, the IF output of the mixers is in either the in phase or the quadrature phase output. This will be at 50 ohms. On the IF output, there will be further amplification and filtering. This is where the user selectable high and low pass filters come. There's most likely, uh, you know, there could be 100 dB of IF amplification on these outputs. And you want uh, low pass filtering if you don't need to, you know, receive a wideband signal. You want to be able to filter out any noise. The RF port on the mixers, well, we'll start from the receive antenna. The receive antenna is going to, doesn't have to be the same as the transmit antenna. It doesn't have to be in the same location either. It could be a. There might be certain instances where you want a different polarization, or you know, you just can't. Uh, you might want to you know get a better return from a an antenna mounted in a different direction or something. Um, on the receive side, we're gonna have another isolator. The reason that we're having this isolator is because of our active canceller. We don't want any energy flowing back out the receive antenna. So the uh, isolator just gonna dump anything to 50 ohm load again. Uh, it's gonna feed a directional coupler. For this is where the active the active cancellation is gonna take place. Remember we had a sample of our transmitted carrier attenuated down to basically the received power level. We're gonna shift the phase 180 degrees. We're feeding that back into our receive port and then we're they're going to be cancelled. The static RF carrier will be cancelled. Here's a little chart, little charts I made. This is a sample of the transmitted signal. We got to attenuate it down to receive the power level, which you know might be negative 80 dBm or so. We're going to phase shift this to cancel the received carrier coming back in, and we are left with the backscatter modulations containing amplitude, frequency, and phase modulation. This is our received signal containing our intelligence. So essentially what we're doing is adjusting the phase, the phase adjuster on our, uh, well actually it'd be this one. At some point when it's 180 degrees out of phase, our carriers are going to cancel, and we're left with our uh, noise riding on our ref reflected uh, signal, which is our backscatter modulation. That our backscatter modulation is what's created by our bug chopping up the uh, FET, and that's internal into the in the implanted bug. We need they need to have a preamplifier around the 20 dB or so, just to uh, boost up our received signal. It'd be a high quality uh, receive receive amplifier. Here's a Vantech um, wideband 2 to 4 gigahertz amplifier. It has about 20 dB of gain. You need to be really careful on receive preamplifiers, as they can add more noise and cause more problems than, the, than they're worth. Again, we will sample. The output of the re receive preamplifier with a diode detector, a nice wideband diode detector like this. This is just to um, get an idea of our received power level to uh, determine the uh, amount of attenuation that we need. By watching the DC output of the diode detector, there'll be a, we can kind of tell. Uh, we basically, tune it for a minimum uh, power on the diode detector output. The preamp fired and feeds another zero degree splitter, another similar splitter like that, and that goes into the uh, RF ports of our RF mixers. That's, uh, that's just a general idea of most likely how these devices work. Uh, there's really, you know, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, it, it looks complicated, but uh, all these devices are well known in the field.
Here's how the bugs work. The retro reflectors are referred to as the angry neighbor family of ret radar retro reflectors. The loud auto uh, one has a NOLIS EK or EY series hearing aid microphone. That's that device. It has a very, very distinct shape. That's a NOLIS microphone. Anytime you see that out in the field, you know, somebody's big as for you. Uh, it has an internal amplifier, not just raw room audio. I'll describe the actual modulator and after I get done going through these. Next to the Tawdry Yard, this is just a tracking beacon, positional data. Um, this is just the, the clock frequency of the modulator. The Rage Master is for uh, VGA uh, computer monitors or VGA series computer monitors. It just uh, taps the uh, red line, essentially. You need to exter externally add the uh, sync signals. Surly Spawn just taps the data line, you know, PS2 or USB keyboard. The actual um, bug, I have, is just a guess based on the descriptions, but it's uh, this is most likely how it works. There's the pulse position modulator internally planted on the bug. You'll see it in the Tawdry Yard photos. Little six pin device, that's most like a little microcontroller or whatever. That the set up as a pulse position modulator at a low frequency carrier. In this example, it's running at 100 kilohertz. And what this does is it feeds the gate of a, a gas FET, which is a uh, type of FET that operates at uh, microwave frequencies. Um, The pulse position modulator then toggles the FET on and off, which acts essentially like a, a switch, but in reality it's more like an attenuator, and that's how it creates the backscattered modulation. Um, you can also use diodes, but since a diode is a nonlinear device, it will create harmonics, but by using the FET, they can reduce the number of uh, harmonics created. I believe the gate and the source are just antennas which could just be pieces of wire. You'll see the FET on the loud auto photo. There's not even really an antenna because there's, there's really no need for an antenna because you just uh, tune the illumination carrier frequency to whatever happens to give you a good return. I believe the source may be tied directly to ground like in this uh, in this patent, they're just tying the source to ground, and the drain just goes to an antenna. There's no need to bias the FET at all because of your, your gate is essentially biasing the dog. That'll create the backscatter AM return. You have your photo angle unit over here. Both the modulator, any microphones hooked up to it, are run off a standard 3 volt lithium battery. The Tawdry Yard unit is just the raw pulse position modulator. Each one has its own carrier, independent carrier frequency for planting the you know, positional data. I always get questions on how to find the lost dogs and lost cats. And when I read this, it would be a good uh, Kickstarter project for somebody to embed one of these units into like a dog collar. That way you could go around the neighborhood and just point your radar at, you know, into the bushes and see if your dog is hiding in the bushes or something. I think that would be a good thing to turn these de turn these devices into, something like that. Um, the Rage Master unit for implant. is for uh, targeting a VGA or Super VGA, that series of monitors. Just taps the red line. Because the video signal essentially has its own bias and it's a very wide band up to you know over 30 megahertz. I believe they are bypassing the pulse position modulator and just running this red video line straight into the gate of the FET because this FET will also act like a mixer and so the illumination will get chopped up with the uh, in, internally in the FET and be reflected back out. The horizontal and vertical sync signals need to be added externally
with a device called the Night Watch Unit to reinsert the horizontal and vertical sinks. If you ever heard about Vanek freaking, that was uh, the infamous Vanek freaking. That's basically all they were doing. They were just, but they're using an antenna to receive the video signal directly. You need to have a phase locked unit to reinsert your, your horizontal and vertical sinks. Otherwise, your uh, picture will roll. Um, the Rage Master units were implanted in the ferrite on the video cables. That's this device right here. That's just a ferrite bead. Most likely they had a fake ferrite bead because this attenuates RF. That's how they hid the uh, device. It's really small and was again the same, operated in the same manner. Um, they just tapped the data line directly on the uh, uh, keyboard and again you Externally, you'd need to uh, add your own uh, clock signals. Um, the drop miner attacks were against the uh, Crypto AG Crypto Fax at the uh, EU uh, uh, office, or whatever they call it. I believe they weren't ag they weren't at attacking the crypto directly. I believe they were attacking the thermal or the laser printer inside the fax machine, and they were receiving a uh, uh, passive RF uh, emanations, you know, coming from that, because every time that laser would fire, it would create a little RF burst. Because these uh, fax machines and like embassies, they all are even military stuff. They tend to use, you know, the public uh, uh, telephone lines, you know, public uh, microwave stuff. But their encryption is so strong that you'll never break it. So the f I think they were attacking the uh, fax machine directly via those types of. Uh, emanations. Oh. Here's kind of an idea how the pulse position modulation works. It just creates a, a sw it's, you know, pulses of square waves in relative position of, you know, the audio signal. It's a very common type of modulation. don't have forty thousand dollars laying around. Try to find one of these old uh, Decatur Range Master radars. They kind of look like that. These operate at the X band, which is ten gigahertz. This is the ten gigahertz uh, oscillator. This is your received mixer. Pointing the horn antenna, which is this, at the unit itself. Here's a DTMF tone pad, and if you those tones you're hearing are being picked up as backscattered modulation from the radar unit itself. You can listen to uh, telephone calls also remotely from a couple feet. But uh, that'd be a good uh, starting point for uh, your own little uh, surveillance projects. <laughs>